Hello everyone, Russ of Aquarimax here. Dealing with a brand new isopod colony is quite different from working with an established one, and that can be confusing for a new isopod keeper. In part 3 of the isopod care guide, I'm going to talk all about what you can expect from a new isopod colony versus an established one. In an upcoming video in the series, we'll delve more into the specifics of feeding isopods. Right now, I want to highlight the differences in feeding an established colony and a new one. When you feed an established isopod colony, you might see something like this. Or this. Or even this. In a new enclosure, on the other hand, it might look more like this. But that is perfectly normal. For one thing, you probably started out with something like 10 to 15 individual isopods. They have pretty modest food requirements, and they can probably meet those just fine with the leaf litter and the decomposing wood and other organic materials in the enclosure. In a new enclosure, therefore, it's a good idea to feed supplemental foods very sparingly, and to check such foods very frequently, and remove whatever remains uneaten before it has a chance to mold. As your colony grows, they'll gradually eat larger amounts of supplemental food so quickly that mold will not have much of a chance, as long as you feed appropriate amounts. On the topic of mold growth, some mold in a new isopod colony is also perfectly normal. You've probably heard the saying, nature abhors a vacuum. In a new isopod colony, this is very relevant. There are all kinds of nutrients in the moist leaf litter and other organic materials that you've prepared for your isopods. And while your isopod population is small, some of the opportunistic mold spores floating around in the air are almost certainly going to take advantage of that. That's part of the reason you want to get some springtails into the culture as soon as possible after you set it up. Other opportunists, like fungus gnats, may show up as well. Again, springtails will help, and so will the population growth of your isopods, of course. A little mold is probably expected at the beginning, but too much mold can entangle your isopods and cause other problems, so if a particular patch of substrate gets really moldy, remove as much mold as you can. You might want to use gloves and definitely wash your hands afterwards. But again, some mold appearing in your new colony, perfectly normal. Before I talk about two more things that you should be prepared for in a new isopod enclosure, I want to give a shout out to my supporters on Patreon. One of my absolute favorite things to do is to share what I have learned and continue to learn about the animals I love with others. Patreon is one way to help make that happen. For as little as a dollar a month, my patrons provide resources that help me keep making videos. And one of the ways that I thank them is to make sure that I answer the questions that they post on Patreon during my live streams here on YouTube. Feel free to check out the link to my Patreon that I'll put at the end of the video. And now back to new isopod colonies. New isopod keepers sometimes ask me why they never see their new isopods. They may be especially perplexed because they got one of the species that is supposed to be very active and visible. Once again, this is normal. A small new population of isopods is going to be much less visible at first. They tend to be much bolder and more active as the colony grows. So, it's a temporary issue. It does depend on species, but in general, the more isopods you have, the more activity you will see. Finally, new isopod keepers are understandably anxious to see tiny juvenile isopods appear among the adults. Sometimes you're lucky. You might receive some new isopods, and as you're opening up the deli cup, you see a swarm of tiny babies that were born en route to your house. It's happened to me a few times. Other times, though, the isopods seem to need an acclimation period before they breed. It might be several weeks, or even months before your new isopods begin to multiply visibly. When I first got zebra pill bugs, it was about four or five months before they bred for me. They obviously don't have that problem anymore. It took my rubber duckies even longer, but again, eventually, they started breeding. So the key is patience. So, now you're hopefully better prepared to deal with the differences between a new isopod colony and one that's been going for quite a while. I'm really enjoying this series, and I hope you are too. In the next episode, we'll cover feeding 
and hydration. If you have a suggestion for an isopod topic you'd like to see me cover in the rest of this series, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. I post videos every Tuesday and Friday all about aquarium and vivarium pets, especially isopods. Feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then click the bell so that you don't miss my next video.